Good afternoon. I think I was equally good or even I sound better than Manish. Good afternoon. No, I think he got a better round of response. Good afternoon. Okay, that's much better. So, uh, thanks a lot. It's indeed my privilege and honor to be here, uh, to be addressing this audience. Um, this day actually belongs to all you students out here. So I want all the graduating students to just stand up for a minute. Just stand up. Okay, take your right hand. Take your right hand, not your left, right. Okay, take your right hand. Go all the way and pat yourself on your back. You deserve it. Okay, pat yourself and give yourself a huge round of applause, guys. Thank you, you can sit. So, if you have settled down now, I want to congratulate all the toppers, all the gold medalists, and I haven't seen so many gold medals given out in any other organization, so uh, it's great. Uh, people usually do assume that uh, people who don't do academically well, they won't do well even in their professional life, right? So that's what most of them think. But fortunately or unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. It's usually the backbenchers who have come out with disruptive ideas for help to change the world. So three cheers to all the backbenchers out there. I want all the guys who didn't get a single medal to cheer with me. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. That's great. Why do you think that backbenchers are the people who are going to disrupt the world? Because these are people who have got nothing to lose. The toppers would go ahead and join a fancy job and keep doing it for the rest of their lives. And these are the backbenchers who are never satisfied with any job they join and they will start up, end up creating their own jobs. <laughs> now, having said that, you must be wondering in which category did I belong to? <laughs> any guesses? Uh, I didn't, I was not a friend bencher, I was not a backbencher. Unfortunately, I was given a special bench. It's outside the room, <laughs> you know, outside the classroom, always getting punishment, stand there, stand there, murga banao. Uh, so fortunately, you won't get punished uh, that harshly nowadays. You can go to the police, you can complain. But in our days, we used to go through all of them. So coming to uh, the world that we are living in today, it's a very, very competitive world. You are surrounded by highly motivated individuals. And having said that, how will you make your mark as a professional in whatever profession you take in, right? And uh, I'll be, most of the time, I'll be talking about my own personal experience and I'll be as, to, as honest, as candid, as open that one can get. Uh, looking at my own personal journey, uh, I basically did engineering and pretty much early on in my uh, career, I figured out that uh, I can't code for nuts. And I did all the courses possible. I did basic, I did C, I did C++. Um, and uh, I realized I was really not good at it. But in engineering, I got computer science in my first year. And I said no to it. And uh, what I really liked was management subjects. And so I took a change uh, in the year two of my engineering. And uh, I did industrial production and engineering from BMS College of Engineering. And uh, I was pretty much sure that I can't code. And uh, I want to do industrial production engineering because uh, there are a lot of management subjects and I was good at it. I used to never feel that I'm uh, mugging it up. I'm doing it for the joy of simple learning that subject. Okay. Uh, so uh, whenever you're talking about your career, you guys have just gone freshly into your very first job. And uh, I want you to take some time out to understand what your core competency is. Okay, so it's on one side you got these people who are your so-called career counselors who look at your academic background and they say, hey, you know what? You can be a good HR, you can be a good sales guy, you can be X, Y, Z things and 9 out of 10 times none of them make sense. Why is it? Because only you know what you're good at. You know yourself for the last 20 years. By now I'm pretty much sure that you know a couple of things. Are you introvert or are you extrovert? Do you like accounting? Are you uh, a trickler for um, keeping account of each and every small things that you spend? We had this guy, his name was Shanbag, uh, when, when I was doing my MBA. And um, any trip that we used to go to, he was the first guy who used to say, hey, I'll keep the accounts. 
you know have you seen any such guys in your group okay who always wants to do accounts and they want to split it exactly in the same way he ate four pani puri he had one extra boo so he'll pay more and uh, that comes naturally to him and now uh, he's heading uh, 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 the entire department at rbs in india and uh, we pretty much knew that he will be a good finance guy because he was in love with numbers and for me it was pretty much clear that i can make connect with people i can talk to people i can sell anything in the world and even though i never learned coding or practiced coding in my professional life i worked for microsoft i worked for symbian i worked for nokia and now in google for the last 5 years without knowing any, any coding so uh, it also talks about uh, how well you want to plan your life it uh, depends on how focused you are and how most importantly do you really understand what your core competency and what your actual inner strengths are so um, your entire success or failure in your career if you ask me it completely depends on how much you really love your job and i want to come out with back with this uh, very famous saying choose a job that you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life and it i really really mean it um so um coming to the next point which i really talked about it's about, all about your hard work in my first 5 five years of my career i almost worked anywhere between 14 to 15 hours a day okay that was my average including weekends and um in your current job how many of you are working just 5 or 6 hours a day everyone 8 hours okay there's something fundamentally wrong quit the job okay <laughs> So if you're not working at this point in time 14 hours a day there's something wrong and what can you do in order to work that hard so basically from my experience um I was really keen uh to know the other facets of business I was a sales guy from day one of my career and uh, I was really keen to know what accounting is what profitability is what HR practices is right uh what quality management is uh go in depth into recruitment and um within those 4 5 years i took so many external cross functional projects within the company that i had so much of knowledge that no other 5 year year old experienced guy would have ever amassed because i was interested in something apart from what was my core competence which was sales and i really do encourage you to have that real big holistic view and uh, gone are the days where you'll be working for huge organizations you'll be working for most of the time a startup which is lean which is mean not more than 50 to 100 people or maximum around 1500 people and there is a opportunity for you to collaborate and show a lot of enthusiasm and being proactive saying hey if if anyone is asking for any kind of a help irrespective of how trivial it could be i want you guys to be the first guy to say hey I want to jump into it and I'm here to help you out and that goes a very very long way in your eventual success of your um, from your career standpoint. Um other thing which I really want to talk about is uh, empathy and being a team player. Um just just a case in point at Google we can afford the best of the talent globally, right? It could be from Harvard, it could be from Stanford, uh, but there's one uh, very critical aspect that we look at uh, that's about uh, if that person he or she is a team player or not. What will you do with 10 great people who are all toppers but they can't gel with each other they can't work with each other you like it or not you will be working with cross functional stakeholders you will be working with different geographies you'll be working with different time zones and if you are not a people person and if you are not a team player that's the end of your career you can't be just a individual you can get research jobs but i'm not sure you'd have been at uh, isb if you wanted to do research you are here because you want to bring a positive impact and you have to work with multiple stakeholders so try to be a team uh, player you can argue as much as possible as our rules but at the end of the day we would expect them to come to a common conclusion and once you make up your mind we would expect everyone to just look at that as a holy grail and go ahead and execute for your company The next point is uh, being flexible and ability to embrace change okay off late um, there was a huge hue and cry about flipkart not uh, recruiting people and they stalled it from uh, for another their uh, placement for another 6 months and so on and so forth but uh, you like it or not that's the reality of life you are choosing cho- you have chosen to be in this fast paced environment if you want to do a cushy 9 to 5 job you still have got government jobs you can go ahead and lead a very comfortable life but if you are looking at the energy if you are looking at making it really big in your career 
uh, you should be flexible. Uh, business plan changes every quarter in a startup. Uh, nine out of the 10 times, uh, the projects doesn't take up. Even in uh, Google in itself, if I can give you an example, eight out of 10 projects do not even take off. We don't even reach the alpha stage, forget the beta. So out of around 100 projects that we take, almost around, just around four or five, we go to a beta stage and we release, release the product. And then eventually we amass hundreds and millions of consumers. Then we think about monetizing, right? So that's the way it is gonna be now. That's the good way it's gonna be even in the future. Um, next thing I wanna talk about is your ability to visualize business at scale. Whatever we are talking about, it has to be at scale. And your playground is your global, your entire universe is your playground. And digital economy has helped you in such a way that you can think global from day one. You can reach out to billion users from day one. There's a potential to do that if you get everything right. There are hundreds of different parameters, but you can't afford to think in hundreds and thousands. It has to be millions and billions, right? And coming to the last uh, piece of advice, I don't know whether this is advice or this is what I feel um, I should be talking about at this point in time. Uh, you can afford to ignore all the five other things that I've spoken to you till now, uh, unless you promise me that you will be adhering to this piece of advice, which is very, very uh, important and crucial. Um, I want to talk about um, uh, hard work. There's no shortcuts when it comes to hard work, right? You have to put in those 14 to 15 hours of real hard work, blood and sweat for initial five to 10 years of your career. Some people are lucky enough to figure out what they ex exactly want to do in first couple of months in their career. But on average, I've seen it takes close to three to four years, good five years to finally decide this is what I'll be doing for next 30 years of my life. So if you feel uh, that you're not in the right place, if you don't love what you're doing, quit it and move on to the next thing. Don't waste your time on that. Try to look at things which really gives you, makes you happy, right? So there's a huge, at the end of the day, all of us are looking at being happy. It's money is just incidental, right? If you are happy, if you really love the job that you're doing, uh, obviously you'll make money at the end of the day, right? And um, other observation that I have is especially the sales guys, because I graduated in sales and uh, it's been almost around 13, 14 years since I graduated. and. Uh, it's disheartening and uh, crazy to see that half my classmates, uh, they already burnt out doing their sales role and all of them have just retired or asking their wives to work, right? Because they couldn't handle this pressure. They end up smoking, they end up drinking. Uh, I encourage each one of you to take some kind of a hobby. Even now, I hit the gym every single day. I, if I'm not able to hit the gym, I go for a swim or I listen to music. So cultivate a hobby, which is really, really near and dear to you. And that will really help you uh, in the long haul. You have to decide right now whether you want to be like a steam engine, like huff and puff and uh, burn out within next eight to 10 years, or you want to be in the long haul and be there for the next 35 years. I'm telling you, this is no one talks about it in the industry, but I have seen it from my own eyes. The burnout rate is just crazy. And if you're not taking care of your health, that's the end of it. Start exercising, start taking care of your health, respect your body right now. So, um, so last thing which I really want to talk about is um, uh, I want each one of you to, for a minute, close your eyes and um, think about your parents, specifically your mother who has made so much of sacrifices for what you are here today, right? And it's very easy to get sucked in this complicated and uh, very vicious ways, maze of uh, what you call a career, a corporate career. But I would really urge each one of you to take at least 10 minutes out in your day to talk to your parents, irrespective of which part of the globe you are. And that's a big mistake which I did and I was sucked up pretty much in my career and I was not spending enough time, but it just really realized to me one fine day, just calling your mom or your father and asking, did he have a good day? What did you do? Is there any help that he needs? And that'll, that's all that the parents are expecting out of you. You are their only and the most precious asset that they have in their old age. Don't let them down. So uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you once again for this big, big day. Uh, congratulations on your graduation. 
and uh, God bless you all. Thank you.